Hi, I'm Bill. And I'm Liz. Today we're going to slew over to a familiar tool, telescopes. Yes, given their long and storied past, it might be best to start examining telescopes through the lens of history. After all, these devices have been helping astronomers and nosy neighbors ever since approximately 1608. That's when brilliant people turn their spy glasses upward and realize there's more in the sky than meets the unaided eye. Ah, my, my. Nowadays, historians agree that Hans Lipperhe, a.k.a. Johann Lipperschi, invented the telescope, but it was actually Galileo... Galileo Galilei? Yes, of the Galilei Galileis. Uh, he was the first one to perform scientific studies of the heavens, as made famous in his runaway 1610 bestseller, Sidereus Nuncius, or Starry Messenger. The early scopes he used just measured around one inch in diameter, and only about half that was usable because the glass had so many imperfections. These telescopes used lenses to focus incoming light and are called refractors. Because the glass back then had so many flaws, it took about 50 years in the 1660s for opticians to come up with a new telescope design using mirrors, which could be made with much greater precision. Uh, naturally enough, these are called reflector telescopes. Famed science inventor and greedy attention hog, Sir Isaac Newton, popularized this mirror design, and so these are often referred to as Newtonian scopes. Then came the catadioptric telescope, which essentially uses mirrors and lenses to shorten the focal length, making for a more manageable telescope. Because a fellow named Laurent Cassegrain invented the basic design, and another named Bernhard Schmidt came up with an innovative and useful component to smooth out the image, one of the most popular designs today is the Schmidt Cassegrain. The main difference between Newtonians and Cassegrains is the curvature of the primary mirror. That's the bigger one which the light bounces off of first. In the 1960s, John Dobson popularized a design that combined a special type of mount for the Newtonian with cheap and readily available ingredients. This is the Dobsonian telescope, and if you've ever been to a star party, you're probably familiar with it. Yeah, Dobson himself has said that even before he came up with the design, He'd been against referring to telescope types by their inventors' names. Newtonian, Schmutonian, he'd say. Cassegrain, Schmassegrain. Schmidt, Schmidt. Apparently, he'd rather call your average Dobsonian a sidewalk telescope instead. So, how do telescopes work? Well, you know, light is a fickle thing. You can split it up, reflect it, refract it, absorb it, slice it, dice it, and fricassee it, practically. And even though we know that light behaves as a particle and as a wave... Which is crazy. <laughs> crazy awesome. We won't focus on that in this episode. You don't need to know that to understand telescopes, and so it's a little beyond the scope of this video. Astronomers and optical engineers use ray diagrams to show light's path through the telescope's innards. Here are the somewhat simplified ray diagrams of a refractor, reflector, and catadioptric. Notice that catadioptrics don't have any cats or dioptrics, despite the name. It doesn't make as much sense as reflector, but oh well. Anyway, seeing a diagram is one thing, but we want to demo this with actual light. This is a simplistic demo of a refracting telescope. Here the flashlight serves as the astronomical light source, so say it's a star or a galaxy. The light comes in to the lens, which then refracts the light, focuses at what's called a focal point, and this is where the eyepiece of the telescope would then be attached to. This is, as we mentioned, simplistic. Usually there's more than one lens, but for the purposes of this demo, we're just using one. All right, here we have a slightly more complicated design. This is more for the Newtonian type of telescope. Uh, here we have the light source, so again, your stars or galaxies or neighbors' windows or whatever it may be comes across and bounces off the primary mirror, hits the secondary mirror here, and ends up at your eyepiece where you can enjoy all the beautiful light and everything that it's showing. Okay, this is a simplistic demo of the catadioptric telescope or a Cassegrain. Here we have the light source, which serves as a star or a galaxy. And that light comes in and bounces off the primary mirror, which is curved, 
bounces to the secondary mirror, which is also curved, and that bounces the light through a hole in the primary to the focal point or to an eyepiece, and that's where you see your astronomical image. And of course, nowadays, astronomers don't stop at just visible light. Yeah, telescopes nowadays observe radio waves, infrared, ultraviolet, x-rays, and the highest energy gamma rays. And we'll touch on all those different types of radiation, metaphorically, at a different time. Hope you enjoyed our astronomy tech episode. Yep, see you next time. These telescopes used lens. <laughs> uh, I feel better that it isn't just me who stumbled now. <laughs> You're too oh. goofy, Liz. Calm down. Be serious. I just like me. had custard, so I'm on a sugar high. Hi, I'm oh, Bill. Wait, sorry, I was oh, playing with my hair. Oh, you said we're ready. I was just taking. I my... was. Oh, sorry. It's a total okay. zen thing. It's like when you pull a drawstring <laughs> to shoot an arrow. You're supposed to wait till the moment is perfect. That's what I do when I start my lines. I'm waiting for the perfect moment. Hi, I'm Bill. And I'm Liz. Today we're going to... <laughs> it is a funny name. I just extended the Z a little long there. <laughs> Liz.